Hey guys, how are you doing? So we have been learning about technology architecture and this video is where we start learning about the terms and the important concepts and start deep diving into the into the deep uh, rabbit hole which is technology architecture, okay? So today we are learning about architecture characteristics. Now as a technology architect, when you have to take, take a decision about the right uh, architecture for a particular product, the place where you start from are the architecture characteristics. In the sense, you want to understand what are the right things or what are the trade-offs or the things that we need critically. In the sense, you'll need some things critically and you'll have to make some trade-offs and this is where you start off, right? This is the place that you start off. So the first stage, like I said, is architecture characteristics, thinking about these. And there are three types usually. The first is the operational architecture characteristics, okay? The second uh, are the structural architecture characteristics. The third are the cross-cutting architecture characteristics. Now in this video, for today's video, because uh, there's quite a lot to cover, uh, we are just going to cover the operational architecture characteristics. That means that when your architecture has to operate, there are going to be some uh, considerations that you'll have to make, some characteristics that the architecture needs to have, or some characteristics that you can trade off, not a problem. Because as a technology architect, you have to be mature enough to understand that you, at any point of time, you can't have all of these conditions available to you, right? You can't match all of these conditions. You can't tick off all the boxes. You have to make some trade-offs, okay? So uh, there are these terms that are that constitute the operational architecture characteristics and you want to be able to understand these terms really well. Now, uh, there will be two, uh, throughout the series, there will be two uh, angles that I will be covering. One will be from a person who is, let's say, uh, in a real world scenario, he has to architect a real world problem now, in the sense, let's say, he's setting up his own company, he's he's a CTO somewhere, he's a technical architect, he has to build something now. And the second perspective that I'm going to be covering, the second angle will be from somebody who wants to learn this from a uh, interview standpoint, in the, in the sense, he's going to go for an interview in, uh, in the next few days, and he's probably learning from an interview standpoint. So, so I'm going to be covering both of these perspectives, okay? So don't worry. Uh, so now these terms are very important for you to understand from both of these perspectives because you want to be able to understand the differences. But specifically for the interview perspective, you need to understand that elasticity is often confused with availability and reliability is often confused with recoverability and robustness, right? So this, this is what makes them very easy targets uh, when you go to a technology architect interview. It makes it a very easy target for the interviewer to ask you these questions and ask you to differentiate between these terms because he knows you'll probably falter or you'll make a mistake out here. Uh, and this is why I'll clarify these terms with you right now before we get any deeper, okay? Uh, and it's very important for you to know these terms. So elasticity is basically ease of adding and removing resources to scale up. So dynamically you want to take a decision that let's say, you know, uh, this architecture want to remove or add some resources to this infrastructure that we already have. And that is basically the elasticity or the, of the infrastructure, since how easy is it for you to add, remove uh, resources, okay? And uh, reliability. Now, so, so uh, let me explain to you now availability, not reliability. I'll explain to you what is availability so that you can differentiate between elasticity and, uh, elasticity and availability. Availability in, instead is uh, the definition, let's saying that how long will the system need to be available? So for example, if you have an e-commerce platform, it needs to be highly available. And the reason for that is that whenever somebody goes uh, and checks out their website, if it's not available, if it's not there, then they're going to lose, end up losing sales, right? End up losing dollars, thousands of dollars probably. So uh, an e-commerce website has to be highly, highly available, right? Even if they trade off with the other things, availability has to always be there. Make sense? And reliability. So, so now you understand the difference between elasticity and availability. Now reliability is basically uh, how fault tolerant is your system in a sense. How is it is uh, how is it able to handle faults? Uh, so f many people confuse faults and failures, right? And I'll have a proper complete video on faults versus failures, but just in a short nutshell, what I'm telling you is that faults and failures are not the same. Faults can appear in the system, but if the system is not reliable enough, it can create, uh, it can lead to complete failures throughout the system. So, so faults will lead to failures, right? They're not the same. It's a very common mistake that, every, like I, I know so many people who make this mistake, right? So uh, what you're checking with reliability is how fail safe is your system? in the sense if it's mission critical or not. So as a technology architect, you need to be aware the system that you're building, is it mission critical? In the sense, 
um, let's say if you're working on a government project and you're building a system that needs to basically launch rockets, right? So that's extremely mission critical. That has to be extremely reliable, right? Uh, may not need to be elast elastic, may not need to be available, right? But it has to be extremely reliable. So you, uh, mission criticality comes with reliability, all right? Then you have recoverability. So if things go down, things go wrong, right? If, it, if a disaster happens, how fast are you able to come back up online again? And to what extent? This is the important part here. This is the caveat. To what extent are you able to come back up? That's the recoverability of the system. So in case you lose all of your data, all of uh, the complete systems go down, shut down, everything goes down. Are you able to come back very fast? And to what extent are you able to resume operations to what percentage? That's the recoverability. Okay. Robustness. Like I said, you know, reliability, rec recoverability, and robustness are three terms that everybody confuses upon. And with this video, after you've learned this from me, you won't be confusing it anymore. Robustness. So robustness is, has to do with errors, edge cases, boundary conditions. Uh, does your system break? Does the system like panic? You know, if you know Golang, you know what panic is. Basically, it start, stops the entire server. Uh, so how uh, able is your system to handle errors? Uh, common, it could be common errors, could be like boundary cases, boundary conditions, could be edge cases. So how uh, able is it to handle these kind of scenarios, right? So that's the robustness of your uh, architecture. Then you have continuity. Now this is uh, very commonly confused with recoverability. So continuity and recoverability are highly, highly confused and inter used interchangeably. But uh, somebody who has a deep understanding of technology architecture, he knows the difference between the two. Continuity is that uh, your system is recoverable, okay? Uh, but that has nothing to do with continuity in the sense, let's say uh, your systems go down now completely, okay? So they are recoverable in the sense, after some point of time, you will recover them. But when they're down, does your business uh, have the capability or does the system have the capability, capability to still keep serving the business and still have some sort of continuity in the business? Can you still maintain continuity with the bare minimum infrastructure that is still online, even if everything has gone down? That's continuity. So continuity is very, very different from recoverability and everybody confuses the two, okay? And like I said, reliability, recoverability, robustness, everybody confuses them. Elasticity and availability, everybody confuses these two. Then comes your performance. Performance is basically your, uh, uh, when you stress test your system, you have your peak analysis, you have you check the capacity, you have, have how frequently are the functions getting used. You understand the performance of your system, of your en entire architecture, okay? So this is, these are the operational architecture characteristics. These, these are what I wanted to cover in this video. And in the next video, we'll talk about a few more um, characteristics. But I hope you're understanding that this is the first stage that the technology architect has to think about before he starts designing an architecture for any problem that he has or any product that he has to design the architecture for. All right, so I hope you're learning a lot. Uh, this topic is not very straightforward. Uh, we're still uh, in the very, very early stages and it's going to get very complicated very soon. So I want you to, uh, that's why I'm explaining every single line. I'm stressing on every single thing because these are concepts that will definitely confuse you. So uh, I request you to watch it again if you didn't get anything or ask me questions in the comments below. If you didn't understand anything, I will answer those questions. Okay, subscribe to the channel because you get, you'll get awesome value. I'll be sharing uh, content on architecture like this. I'll be sharing content on system design and design patterns. Those will be two different series that will co be coming up. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.